This video provides a short overview of our recent study published in eLife titled Epigenetic Scores for the Circulating Proteome as Tools for Disease Prediction. In this video, we summarise the study and our key findings. We also detail how you can generate the epigenetic scores for proteins we have created, which we refer to as protein epi scores, in your own cohorts using DNA methylation data. Chronic illnesses such as heart disease, stroke and diabetes place large burdens on healthcare systems and can substantially reduce an individual's quality of life as they age. Identifying people with the highest risk of developing age-related diseases is therefore a priority. A single blood test can provide a lot of information about the biological state of an individual. For example, proteins in the blood have important roles in our bodies. By analysing blood, we can also detect chemical additions to our DNA, termed DNA methylation, an epigenetic modification that can help to turn genes on and off. These chemical additions at sites known as CPG sites can be reversed and are thought to record the body's response to a range of environmental and biological stresses. They can affect both the levels of proteins in the blood and the risk a person has of developing a disease. Predictive scores that use DNA methylation data from points across the human genome to predict blood protein levels have not been systematically developed on a large scale and related to the onset of disease. In this study, we combined epigenetic and protein data from the blood of over 700 individuals to generate epigenetic scores for proteins. An epigenetic score for a protein is a score that's trained using a large amount of DNA methylation data often at over 300,000 CPG sites. DNA methylation at CPG sites that is in some way predictive of a given protein will be selected by the model, and each selected CPG receives a weighting coefficient. The weightings enable us to project the scores into new cohorts that have DNA methylation data available and generate epigenetic scores for protein levels in them. We used protein measurements from the Scottish Lothian Birth Cohort 1936 and the German CORA study to train epi scores. Of 953 proteins that we tested, we retained 109 that were significantly associated with measured protein levels in our test samples, with an effect size correlation greater than 0.1. We then investigated whether these 109 epigenetic scores for proteins, which we refer to as protein epi scores, associated with the onset of 12 diseases in over 9,000 individuals over a follow-up period of up to 14 years. We did this in the Generation Scotland cohort, which has DNA methylation data and data linkage to a range of GP and hospital records available. The diseases included diabetes, stroke, depression, Alzheimer's dementia, various cancers and inflammatory conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis and inflammatory bowel disease. You can see the number of cases, the number of controls, and the mean years to onset of each disease summarized here. These were included in our Cox Proportional Hazards models. In our fully adjusted Cox Proportional Hazards models, we found that protein epi scores predicted the onset of a range of age-related morbidities over the 14-year follow-up period. There were 137 associations in total between protein epi scores and diseases. Some epi scores were associated with multiple incident morbidities. For example, complement five was the epi score with the highest number of disease associations, suggesting that it may be a useful predictor of multiple morbidity risk. Importantly, when we compared our epi score associations with type two diabetes with associations found by previous studies that had used actual measured protein levels in the blood in relation to diabetes, we found that 23 epi score associations which you can see here as pink points on the plot, replicated the associations found with the actual measured proteins in previous studies. Our results therefore suggest that protein epi scores capture a disease relevant biological signal that may help us to identify high risk individuals in a population. The scores we have created could be used in future as tools to predict disease risk. This may help us to better intervene and stop people developing diseases as they age. One of the reasons protein epi scores may be useful as tools for disease prediction is that DNA methylation is thought to capture a longer term reflection of the biological state of an individual that may be more stable than single time point protein measurements. In the case of acute phase inflammatory proteins are known to fluctuate between measures. 
If you'd like to generate these scores in your own cohorts with DNA methylation data available on the Illumina platform, one option is to project them into your own cohort using the weights provided in our supplementary table. To do this, we advise that you ensure your DNA methylation is in beta value format, that you mean impute any missing CPG measurements in your DNA methylation file, and you scale your DNA methylation data such that each CPG has a mean measurement of zero and a standard deviation of one. You'll then be able to search for the CPGs in your sample that match those with weights generated in our study. And the process of generating the score in your own cohort involves multiplying your CPG measurements by the respective CPG weight from our study. When you sum the CPGs in your sample after this multiplication, this will be your protein epi score that can be generated for each person in the cohort. This process is repeated for each of the 109 protein epi scores to generate the full set of projections. Another way to generate these epi scores is through our Shiny app, Methyl Detector, which has all the weights for our protein epi scores integrated and automates the projection process such that you can upload your methylation data and receive a set of scores back from the app. All you then need to do is cite our original paper in eLife when using the protein epi scores. For a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do this, please visit the Methyl Detector tutorial video on our YouTube channel. If you have any queries about the protein epi scores, please contact us and we will be happy to answer them. Finally, we would like to thank all the volunteers that have contributed data to the German Cora cohort, the Scottish Lothian Birth cohorts, and the Generation Scotland cohort, without which this research would not be possible. All that is left to say is thank you for taking an interest in our work and we hope that these results will be of value to you.